In this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I'm going to help you counter Gandalf the Grey, who is one of the most feared good side commanders in the game. So stick around in this video for everything you need to know about stopping this commander and making the players using him wish that they had never left their settlement. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Shiskool Gaming, and Gandalf the Grey is strong for a number of reasons. In this video, I'm going to talk about what makes him work? Why is it that he's so difficult to deal with? Then I'll talk about in general what you need to know to be countering him. And then I will give you a top list, the top good side commanders and evil commanders that you can use to absolutely obliterate Gandalf the Grey. Because yes, he does have vulnerabilities, but let's start with his strengths. Gandalf the Grey does a number of things incredibly well, primarily in the realm of having really solid healing if you choose to get those talents but also amazing damage mitigation making it so that all allied units once you reach loyalty level five by the way have massive damage reduction for the first three rounds and he has a nasty debuff mithrandir is a debuff applied to the enemy that's you the person fighting the gandalf uh, making it so that your troops do less damage. So being able to cleanse debuffs actually is really helpful in dealing with Gandalf. That's one thing that will help. Uh, but before I get into all these weaknesses, I want to cover just the fact that Gandalf is strong in part because like every skill point on here is good. Like, like every talent point you apply is actually really, really great. And he's accessible to just about everybody in season one. Like every good side player should have him, no questions asked. And it's just like, Almost any equipment you put on this guy is good. And I know this is an exaggeration and that's not really true, but the equipment options for Gandalf the Grey are actually very copious. But enough about why he's good, let's get right into the counters. One of the problems of Gandalf is that he is very, very vulnerable to madness. Madness makes it so that the commander can't tell friend from foe or the troops can't tell friend from foe. And so you end up attacking your own troops or in the case of Gandalf the Grey, he could even heal the enemy troops when he is in, in madness state. And it is absolutely ridiculous. In fact, for those of you that use Gandalf for taking tiles early on, and you're like, why is it that Grima is absolutely obliterating me? That's why. <laughs> that is exactly why. It's because madness is just insane against Gandalf the Grey and against many very powerful commanders. Also, you can clean up a Gandalf the Grey shockingly easily if, if you just out damage the healing. So you can do just huge amounts of damage and Gandalf the Grey cannot handle it. Also, things that remove healing effectiveness. So for example, and I'll talk about commanders in, in just a moment and be very specific with my recommendations. But if you look at a commander like Gimli, for example, he has an ability that cuts healing. Uh, well, it doesn't even cut healing in half. He just makes you can't recover hit points for two rounds. That sort of stuff works just shockingly well against Gandalf. And last but not least, Pursuit. The modifier Pursuit is really, really good because it gets around avoidance effects and Gandalf has several avoidance effects. So to show you a Pursuit modifier, this is just one place you can get Pursuit on this Harp of Lothlorien. It makes it so that all allies in your commander have a chance of gaining this effect which ignores the target's evasion. Well, guess what? Gandalf has evasion, and being able to ignore his evasion at the start of the fight is kind of a big deal. Here's Mithrandir, and when you max it, he avoids the first three instances of damage in battle, okay? So being able to cut that effect is very strong. Those are the things, the ingredients that you can combine in different ways to try to knock out a Gandalf. Some of that you can do straight up just with equipment, like I was showing you, having Pursuit as equipment. I don't think you want to go necessarily all in on equipment with Pursuit um, just to deal with Gandalf the Grey. There'd have to be other commanders you're bumping into where you'd want to potentially consider that investment. However, I mean, gosh, there's even other things too, like the fact that Gandalf the Grey does a lot of stunning is also super relevant. If you make it so you have stun immunity, that is yet another way of dealing with Gandalf the Grey. There are actually a lot of things, and the stun immunity and also inflicting madness can be done with your helmet selection choices. 
So having a helmet like I do over here, a Trapper's Hood with Hysteria, chance to inflict madness, or um, if you had a Bone Mask with Hysteria, chance to inflict madness, that is a way, even if you don't use one of these commanders I'm about to share with you, you can still start to attack the weaknesses of Gandalf just with your equipment, and if you know you're up against good, and if you are, you're going to see lots of Gandalfs, then having Hysteria just seems like really, really wise. On the topic of that stun immunity, by the way, I specifically have this Horseman's Helmet with stun immunity to try to counter what Gandalf is doing so I can start the fight right, baby, with some big damage firing off as fast as I can. And on that note, the top commanders in order for how you counter Gandalf the Grey. And I'm talking hard counter, baby. Well, we'll, in fact, we'll range it from like hard counter to maybe like a soft counter. I'll explain what that means. But the first just get wrecked counter is going to be Gimli. Gimli is really good. Better than people give him credit for. In fact, in my video where I said, here are the best commanders to start a season with, Gimli is one of those commanders I think you should be using. He is the number one easy counter to Gandalf. And I mean hard counter. Gandalf will be completely wrecked and you'll just be... Uh, laughing with joy at the depth of your victory and how many troops you have left over. The reason that Gimli works so well is that, as I was showing you earlier, he has the ability to cut healing, but he also has massive amounts of damage, and there's literally nothing Gandalf can do. Once you start leaning in, like, you're doing so much damage, you're cutting his healing, he can't handle what Gimli does. There is no way to negate this. Not with equipment. There's nothing a Gandalf can do except get wrecked by Gimli. So keep that in mind. I don't know how that ties into the lore of Lord of the Rings Rise of the War exactly or the, the movie series. But yeah, it works shockingly well. The number one counter. And this, by the way, is the build that you would use. It's just really strong. From here, there is another counter. And if you didn't have... Gimli, you're like, man, Chiskel, I love dwarves and I want to counter, but uh, is there something a little easier to access? The answer is yes. Dwalin is the number two counter. And this is not the build that you would use. In fact, I probably need to go switch up this build to something else. But if you ran a very high damage build on Dwalin, you also can counter Gandalf handily. And I got my booty handed to me a number of times by Dwalins. He is a great investment in the game. He is an easy investment in the game. Every single good player, or once you enter into later seasons, if you go non -role play, like pretty much everybody could get access to him if you really wanted him, okay? And Dwalin is just so good because of his low investment. It's very hard to negate what he's doing, which is just raw damage, and there is a lot of raw damage. So where would you be going to try and counter a Gandalf? I think that you've got to be going in on Durin's Blood, All In, Whirlwind, Experienced Warrior, Hunt Down, and Collaboration as well. Just as much damage as you can load into there. And it's possible that a build with Warrior of the Lonely Mountain and also Longbeard, where the commander's ignoring physical damage, can do very well also. Um, and it's just so easy to counter a Gandalf. This is a hard counter. Not as strong as Gimli, but still really good. The number three commander on the list, a little bit more difficult to access. Who I, I mean, to the point, I don't even have him unlocked yet. And that is going to be Legolas. Now, Legolas is good for all the same reasons that I was just talking about with these other commanders. He is going to do really high damage. And he's also got at R3, everything that he needs. Loyalty level three, he has everything that he needs to be a hard counter against Gandalf. The only thing that could maybe be done to deal with this is just a Gandalf with sufficiently strong gear compared to yours could still survive and do pretty well against you. But if we just get a look at what Legolas is doing here, um, he's got a chance to do follow-up. Follow-up makes it so that you have multiple attacks in a round. He's going to make it so that against an enemy target with the lowest hit points, he's going to do a bunch of damage. He's got Elven Prince. Your normal attacks have a chance of doing extra damage. You hear what I'm saying here? It's just lots of damage all over his kit. You can also do a little bit of healing and damage reduction as well, as well more physical damage. But unfortunately for Gandalf the Grey, the fourth counter on the list is possibly the strongest tier two good commander in the game. At least I think he's the strongest good commander in the game uh, at tier two, and that is... 
Theoden, and Theoden is a nasty counter. Not as strong as the other ones. I would actually will call this a soft counter. Most of the time you're going to win, and you'll win by a fair margin, but not the insane victories that you get with Gimli or Dwalin or Legolas, but still good. This is a little bit gear dependent, so if you're completely outgeared, maybe the Gandalf can get around what you're doing. He needs to be loyalty level 5 in order to really be a great Gandalf counter, but once you get there, my goodness, he's got great healing, he's got insane damage, and I've just seen a shocking number of reports where it does not go well for our friend Gandalf. And since we're talking about cavalry, the number 5 commander on the list is going to be Eowyn. Eowyn is another commander that I have advocated that pretty much everybody should go and invest in if you're playing good. She is a soft counter. It is going to depend a little bit on your gear. She's got great damage and stun immunity, which is definitely helpful against Gandalf. I mean, Eowyn is just so easy to use. You just stack a ton of speed onto her, and you could pretty much send her into just about any fight and expect to do pretty well which is one of the virtues of Eowyn as a commander, just like very easy to use. A commander that's a little bit more difficult to use. I have him number six on the list, but maybe he deserves to be a little bit higher, but he scales so well with good gear against Gandalfs. Man, every time I saw a Gandalf, I sent my Eomer to go punish it. Eomer does so much damage with the raw damage build. In fact, I have a video dedicated to that build. I'll have a card up in the top. You can go check out the raw damage build and to show you the kind of gear that I've got lined up here. Oh my gosh. With the right gear, Aomir, Aomir just shreds a Gandalf. He has amazing damage. The only downside is it does take a more decent investment to get him to where he needs to be. And entering into the honorable mention category, I'll say Arwen is actually a great counter. Here's the build I've been using all season, and it's been countering Gandalfs. But the weirdness of Gandalf and Arwen is that both of them are like tickling each other. And so Arwen tickles slightly more, I guess, and Gandalf loses slightly more troops. But like, you know, we're talking like four or six commands of like victory like it's not a huge victory but they're only losing like eight commands total you see what i mean like both of them do so much healing they barely lose anything but arwen i think every single time i've run into a gandalf i have won which is kind of cool in the early game but otherwise her late game viability they start to question it the final one i asked so just an honorable mention because it requires so much investment is if we make our way over to tier three if you had a king of the dead he does big unit buffs and big damage, so he can be a hard counter with uh, Guardians and also Oathbreakers, but he needs really great gear to pull it off. It's just so much investment. I mean, it's an honorable mention, okay? And it deserves to be one. Finally, let's get to the top list for evil, shall we? And although I don't have access to these evil commanders yet, I think we are going non role play in this next season. Allow me to share with you four commanders on the evil side that do so well. It's absolutely ridiculous. First up is Lurts. Obviously, with Mama Kills is insane, but even without them, it's just a hard counter to Gandalf and rip your Gandalf if you run into Alerts. The second is Sauron. The madness is just so difficult for Gandalf to deal with, and Sauron inflicts so much madness, it's a hard counter. As I was describing earlier, when you're smashing those high-level tiles, Grima inflicts madness. A very good counter to Gandalf, and fortunately not actually a very popular commander to use otherwise, uh, but you will win probably three-fourths of your battles with a very healthy margin. And the final evil commander I will give you to work with to try to take down Gandalfs is the Mouth of Sauron who probably is a 50-50 on how he'll perform, but generally you don't have to be afraid at least using a Mouth of Sauron battling into a Gandalf. The good news here is that pretty much everyone on the side of evil should be aiming for alerts anyways. So get your hands on alerts and have some fun smashing some Gandalfs. If you enjoyed this video, hey, do me a favor and smash the like button on the video and consider subscribing. If there are any other counters, either honorable mention or hard counters, that we should have been discussing, definitely let me know down below in the comments. We tried to really stick with 
tier one and tier two commanders so that they're very very accessible although we did throw in an occasional t3 and a big shout out to drucifer my partner in creating this video i probably should have started by saying that but we hope that you have enjoyed this and until next time you have fun smashing your enemies